Scotland and Georgia, folks. Bit of a game of two halves, but Scotland see the Georgians off with a big old second half, 33-6. Just watch this one here in NZ. The sun is not far from coming up. And we've still got Ireland and Samoa to go, but for this one, we'll go through some key events and stats. You guys can let us know your thoughts on how it went. Seemed like a pretty nice sunny day up in Scotland. Pretty decent crowd. Final home game before the Scottish boys and the Georgians. Uh, head off to France and some familiar faces in action. Early Duhan, big old carry. Early was looking dangerous, but also kind of failed to catch a kick that the Georgian had put over his shoulder. He ended up bobbling that into touch. So it did put his team under a little bit of pressure, but the Scottish mall defense was good. Halted the Georgian forwards early in their own 22. Scotland got on top at scrum time, which pretty much lasted the whole game, I think, which will be pretty pleasing for them. Um, after the Georgians, <clears throat> their backs had been putting in the old up and unders, Niniash really especially. Um, so yeah, Georgian backs wanted to play with a bit of kicking game. Scottish scrum does all right. And then the Georgians, uh, their forwards <clears throat> won penalty at the breakdown. So kind of tit for tat stuff. Nobody really able to dominate early, although the first penalty of the game through uh, Matt Carver's boot, who I'd totally forgotten about. He's the go. The commentators helpfully reminded me who kicked that winning penalty against Wales last year. Um, yeah, he kicked the first points of the game. So 3-0 early to Georgia, away from home. Georgia defense continued to look pretty good. They put a nice choke tackle in on Hugh Jones when he was carrying a bit too upright. They put Duhan van der Merwe into touch. So, yeah, their defense was quite capable of keeping the Scottish attack, which is pretty sharp. Uh, quiet early, which speaks highly um, of the Georgians' band. It's, it's probably the most impressive thing I, I saw in that first half, to be honest. And uh, the Georgians did manage to put a bit of offensive pressure on, after all that good D, on about 18 minutes. And this is probably the best period of play we saw from them, ball in hand, some offloads, Lobjanidze, the halfback with a nice snipe. Um, Scotland ended up conceding another penalty, which the Georgians slotted. So 6-0. That's the final scoring of the Georgians, sadly. Uh, unable to really get much more kind of go forward. The Scots did have a chance, though. They didn't score any points in the first half, but they did have a chance. You know, from just before the half an hour mark, you could see them finally kind of working their way into the game. Decent period of pressure. Um, first with a line-out, which got advantage, and then they did a tap-and-go. Georgian defense was still up to the challenge, but... Um, you could see, and that's I wrote a note at this point, um, the commentators mentioned it a bit later, but the Georgians were definitely trying to, to keep the, the Georgians, the Scots were definitely trying to keep the tempo of the game high to tire the Georgians out. It just seemed to be a strategy. I mean, if even I can notice it. Yeah, so um, it, <clears throat> it paid dividends in the second half. It may not have looked it in the first half, and it may be meant that the Scots made a few too many errors in the first half, but as I said... We've got to give a lot of credit to the Georgians' defense because in the first half, they were phenomenal. Um, Stain had a big carry. White was um, doing a good support line, but he ended up knocking on. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about, like just a little bit too rushed from the Scots. But as I said, that's probably the the objective was to keep things going fast. And then uh, errors creeping into the game from the Georgians as well as their second kick out on the full. It was Lobjanita this time, the halfback, um, which gives Scotland a chance. Um, after you've just been under the pump, you put yourself back under pressure. Um, Scotland scrum gets another penalty. They go for touch. They go for a maul. The maul gets stopped, but they put it into the midfield. Then they send it wide. Stain looks to have gone over for a try, but it's some great scramble there, I think, from the fullback and the winger uh, for Georgia. So he ends up knocking it on over the line. Maybe he had a fingertip on it. Maybe not. But, um, yeah, no, he's lost it forward. So no try for the Scots. And sadly... For Mamukashvili in his 100th game, the hooker, he goes off injured after 37 minutes. So doesn't get quite even a half of rugby in his 100th game. And Chichen Itza, the, um, the lock, he goes off injured too. So the Georgians, um, maybe it also adds to that second half where the game gets away from them. They had a guy, a couple of guys go off a bit earlier than they would have expected. But yeah, first half was scoreless from the Scots. Georgians are up 6-0. Uh, they've had more run meters, 287 to 268. They've had pretty even possession, 51-49 to the Scots, but then territory is 55-45 to the Scots, kind of edging that second half a bit more. And um, both sides are tackling, like Scots are in the 90s and the Georgians are in the high 80s. So there's no tries being scored 
that kind of makes a lot of sense. Uh, Niniashvili's had 71 metres and beaten a couple of defenders. Duhan's already beaten six in the first half. Dempsey and uh, Ivanashvili, the two top tacklers in that first half. Dempsey with eight and Ivanashvili with ten. I just got an email. Uh, second half, uh, it does start at a pretty crazy pace. Uh, pace and Niniashvili puts in a try saver on Duhan van der Merwe. Mark Carver almost gets an intercept, but... Yeah, uh, the Georgians aren't looking up to the same speed of the game in the second half as the Scots, man. You can feel points are coming, and it's another bloody kick move. We mentioned it in the preview that the Scots are scoring a lot of tries from kicks. They get another one. I think that's four games in a row. Uh, it's a Scottish scrum, which gets a penalty, which gets to a five-meter line-out, which they maul. The maul gets stopped, but they go wide with the kick from Russell to Duhan and uh, seven points to six. Good conversion from the sideline. The Scots go in front. That is the first of 33 unanswered second half points. Duhan gets another line break a few minutes later. Desperation tackle from the Georgians. They kept tackling, man. Uh, phases from the Scots. Batty goes close. Finally, Darge goes over. It's relentless pressure from the Scottish forwards. 14-6. Um, Georgian Maul defense holds on 58 minutes, but the Scots go eight phases. Pick and goes from Sebastian, who's come on, from Richie. And the Scots have cleared the bench at this time. Healy's come on, so, um, you know, they're, they're giving him at a game time instead of just keeping Russell on for 80, which is pleasing. Darge has gone off. Like, a bunch of the guys have already been cleared. Dempsey finishes that one 21-6. Um, Richie gets pulled down. Jamie Richie gets pulled down. When he's going for an aerial ball by the Georgian winger, which he seems a bit miffed about, which I don't blame him because he's a week, a couple of weeks away from a World Cup. He doesn't want to pick up any injuries, but um, nothing doing. Penalty for the Georgians, uh, against the Georgians. Uh, Dempsey goes close on 68 minutes with a great bit of power. Horn next phase pops it to Kyle Stain. Try time, 28-6. It's all Scotland. It's all Scotland. Georgia virtually had no territory in that second half. And they did have... One of their few attacking phases in the second half, shut down by um, some good Scottish defence, Tupolotu put in a good hit. And then uh, final try of the game is the second one for Big Duhan. Ben Healy puts in his second attempt at a big wide ball. First one didn't go to hand. Second one goes over. It's a great finish from him in the corner. It makes it look effortless. And um, yeah, it finishes pretty comfortable for the Scots in the end. So all that kind of high intensity, quick play, you know, keeping the game moving, quick lineouts, taps and whatnot, plus a bit of scrum pressure. Um, yeah, like I said, it paid dividends. It seemed to be the difference between the sides in the second half. Run meters finished 647 to 418. So the Scots just went, yeah, bananas in the second half. Possession finishes 57-43. Second half, Scots had 62% possession. So just dominant. They had more territory, 54%. More clean breaks, 6-2. to two. More defenders beaten, 23-9. And the Georgians conceded more penalties, 11-7. to 7. Their line-out also missed a few options, the Georgians. Um, having your experienced hooker go off before halftime obviously doesn't help. Georgians had to make 180 tackles by the end of the game to 97. First half was actually pretty even. So, yeah, the Georgians spent the majority of that second half defending. Duhan finishes with 10 defenders beaten, 4 clean breaks, and 112 metres. Niniash really still looks dangerous for the Georgians. 135 metres and six defenders beaten from him. But, um, yeah, just not enough ball in the second half. Dempsey, 57 metres, four defenders beaten at 13 from 13 tackles. As he put a lock on that number eight jersey. Uh, Jalagonia for the Georgians is the top tackler of the game with 18 from 19. But, um, yeah, there you go, folks. It was looking like a pretty interesting one in the first half, but only a 6-0 deficit, but... Yeah, the Scots certainly put the Georgians to the sword in the second half. Still think the Georgians look pretty good uh, at times. I think um, if they get more matches against teams like Scotland, they will be more able to go 80 minutes with teams like Scotland. But that's something for World Rugby for, to decide. And um, yeah, the Scots go into what is a pretty nasty looking pool uh, at the World Cup. But having scored a few nice tries and we'll certainly put the other teams in that pool on notice speaking of other teams in that pool off to watch Ireland and Samoa now you guys let us know your thoughts on the game and um, yeah I'll talk to you guys again soon see you later